I have a very strong opinion. <laughs> it, it all revolves, that's an overstatement, 90% of it revolves around Israel and Palestine. You have to understand that Palestinians also bleed and that they also have a legitimate grievance. Israelis may also, but Palestinians in a nutshell are being punished for something they did not do, which is commit the Holocaust. Until Palestine is, Palestinians are recognized as having a grievance just as much as Israelis do, and until that grievance is addressed and addressed fairly, not with walls and not with little bits of settlements scattered across the West Bank, but until it is equitably and fairly finalized, you will not, you will not have peace. It will take Israel pulling back to the 1967 borders, halting further settlement building, allowing Palestinian refugees to return. That's what it will take. That proposal has been on the table since 2002 from the Arab League and the Organization of Islamic Conference. In exchange for that, every country in both of those organizations will recognize Israel and will open up full diplomatic relations with them. Six years, that proposal has been on the table. Israel has refused it. It's certainly uh, sympathetic to Palestine. It's certainly, uh, you know, when Israel helicopters fire rockets into some street and kill six people, including a, a Hamas activist, that is reported that Israel killed six people, including one Hamas activist, um, as opposed to, say, CNN or, or, you know, Fox, which will report that Israel killed a Hamas activist and not mention those other people. But yes, there are front page photos, you know, almost every day of, of the latest outrage. It's certainly skewed. I agree with that. But you, you have to look at, you know, who is doing, who is committing, frankly, the majority of the violence. Uh, I, since 1988, I don't remember the statistic exactly, but something like, you know, 10 Palestinians have been killed for every Israeli. Uh, raise your hand if you've read that in a U.S. newspaper lately. <laughs>